Hello dear Chess24 viewer, it's French Grandmaster Laurent Fressinet for my video series on Berlin defense. And this is the first one about, uh, and we'll start with directly with the, which was considered to be the, the refutation of the Berlin before uh, Kamnik uh, played it against Kasparov. And this end game was supposed to be quite bad for Black. But then Kamnik started to play it against Kasparov in his uh, in his victorious match in 2000, and somehow this uh, this Berlin resurrected. And now, now I should say that this uh, this end game is not considered to be critical anymore, and uh, and um, Black is supposed to have no problem. And we will so King takes d8, and here we have many moves, and we will start with the most uh, critical try for White which is 9 h3 and um, it became very very popular at the top top level and uh, recently uh, alpha 0 i was uh, started as well this uh, uh, intelligence artificial from uh, google started to um, uh, started to play this bishop e7 and uh, it's kind of a new concept even if it's not uh, uh, completely new because, uh, for instance, uh, Pavel Elianov uh, played it against me in 2015, and some uh, very strong masters like uh, Aonian or uh, Kayakin uh, played it uh, as black. So, and the plan is very simple for black: is just to exchange this knight because uh, black is trying to exchange some pieces because. Um, White has a space advantage, and uh, then as well the bishop could uh, could develop here on f5, for instance. So that's a very simple plan, and uh, it works against uh, all the moves. Let's say as we will see in the next video uh, after knight c3, for instance, or um, rook d1 check. Uh, yeah, only one check, and it's always the same plan for black, just trying to play bishop e7 and knight h4. So we start with h3, so we go bishop e7, as advertised, and now, okay, uh, white has many, many different moves, so it's possible to go g4, uh, the main move being knight c3, which we will see later, so g4. Knight h4 takes takes. Now it's possible to play rook d1 or bishop f4. Let's say bishop f4, h5, f3, uh, g5. Uh, this pawn will be hanging on h3, so this is not possible. f3, uh, bishop e6, and king will come to c8. And uh, it's not really an issue for black. And this position is very much fine. Hooks will come in the center. And it's not, not clear what uh, white gained from all this uh, g4. So g4 I don't think is really, really critical after bishop e7. White has some other tries. They can go, for instance, rook d1 check. Uh, just to take the line and... Uh, that's a very very common move in this uh, in this Berlin, and followed by Bishop G5, for instance, trying to to prevent this uh, Knight H4 idea. But then we can just take, or even H6 would be less good. Takes takes Knight C3, uh, Knight G6, King H2, and it feels like preparing. Preparing um, g4, followed by king g3. It could be a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit better for white, even though it's not completely sure. But we can just take, take, and uh, it's not clear what uh, what uh, white ach uh, achieved. I can continue with king s7, for instance, followed by h6 and g5, and uh, g5. And it's very much fine for 
for black. As we can see, this Balin ending. Uh, the good thing for black is that the king is in the already in the center. So you have a very often a pretty active king. Uh, so after bishop e7, there is many many moves, of course, which were tied, but we will try to focus, of course, on ideas. And you can find on the PGN file with the video all the all the detailed uh, analysis. So knight c3 is the main move, and now, as planned, we go knight h4, exchanging this uh, this uh, this knight. Actually, it's not forced. And uh, I myself, I played knight d4 here against Elianov. It was one of the first games in this line, and he played he played quite interesting setup, which uh, I didn't see. It was very unclear. So I will, I will show you. I think here knight f5 is completely fine. I will get back to it. But um, c5 he played uh, knight d2. This is the idea. Not to change, and then I can, I can just uh, go f4, g4, g4, and uh, and this is a plan for for white. And the knight on h4 is a bit, is a bit strange. But uh, and now he just wants c6. So of course I cannot. I have to prepare my f4, g4. Let's say if I go f4 here, he will just go h5. And prevent my g4, and it's not clear what I achieved here. So I want knight e4 first. King c7, which this is a very weird plan, which uh, and very ambitious as well. Just black wants to to go bishop e6, rook d8, and uh, pretend the king is very well placed here, and that the d6 that the d6 square is not it's not such a big deal after all. And it's a uh, very very interesting idea. Uh, I went bishop f4, bishop e6, bishop h2 now, just to keep this vis-a-vis uh, -vis between the bishop and uh, uh, the king could be could be unpleasant and could lead to some tactics as well. I have the um, 96 idea, so uh, that's very very sharp position, and uh, that's the point in Berlin. Actually, it's uh, not exactly an endgame. Uh, it's an endgame, but um, it's a sharp. I would say I would call it more sharp middle game because only the queen and one minor pieces are missing, but the, the rest of the pieces are here. So this is quite. It's not a pure ending. Let's put it this way. Bishop h2. He played rook d8. I won knight f4. Bishop f5. Rook e1. Uh, and now I, I want just to play e6, and now this uh, this uh, the, it will be dangerous with some discover check. And he went king b6. I went bishop g3. Okay, and it was g5, knight h5, rook d4, and black is completely fine here. Very active pieces, and uh, I won in the end, but uh, I was not better here. So. This could be tied, this uh, 11 c5. It's interesting. But I think knight f5 here it's uh, very simple for, 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 for black. Of course, uh, white can repeat if they want. That's, a, that's one of the issues in Berlin that uh, if you open out this playing for door, it's very often, and if he's a good player, uh, it's very often to prevent it. But if your opponent is uh, ambitious, then you will definitely get uh, some chances to play for a win. So knight d2. Uh, now, uh, many options again uh, for black, like many reasonable options, like h5, for instance, to, to stop this g4. And um, yeah, it's of course playable for both sides. Knight e4 could follow b6, bishop g5. Yeah, with a complete, complicated position. It's a matter of uh, uh, ideas and uh, matter of taste, I would say, for, for black. I like I like here yeah, to play b6, to start to... to I just want to, to go bishop b7 and c5, which is uh, 
Very often, a nice idea for black. So, knight f5, knight d2, b6, rook d1, check. Uh, otherwise, the king, uh, after bishop b7, the king could run to the queen side and the rook could develop easily. So, that's why uh, I think white has to has to has to start with check. If they would go g4, then knight h4. And uh, of course, the idea for 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 black is to is to is to play h5, and uh, it's uh, very tricky for for white to to protect this pawn. So generally, white continues with f4, then h5. Um, f5 is uh, of course the logic of uh, the previous move f4 and now takes takes and uh, black is in time to undermine the the um, white uh, pawn chain and uh, suddenly it looks, it's just very good for for black because if you play f6 for instance i will just give a check and take on g4 and uh, it's basically game over so as as I told you before, it can go very wrong uh, for white if they are too ambitious. So d1 check is a move. King e8. So here is always a question. Uh, here I, I thought a4 was kind of uh, critical to to weaken actually the the black uh, structure. Sometimes it's uh, it's always tricky to say with this a5 for whom. Uh, uh, for um, which side it's uh, in favor because um, it very much depends on the position but here he has a plan of uh, white I think it's in white favor because in general I think it's quite a good deal for, for black to have this a5 a4 but here you will see now the plan is to play bishop f4 and uh, to go e6 and as you will see, if the pawn would be on a7, then the b6 pawn would be would be protected, but not anymore. So if I go e6 and take this this pawn on on b on c7, then the pawn on b6 will be weak. So that's the point of this a4. And of course, it's always unpleasant uh, for let's say if I go bishop b7 here, just a5, and it's a bit, a bit, a bit unpleasant because uh, uh, ACC, A6 is also coming, so uh, it's in general better to go A5, but I think black is fine anyway. So bishop F4, and now, uh, now we go G5, uh, just to, just to, ah, the so bishop, and H5, threatening just to, to go like uh, g4 was as well an option for white next move let's say if i would play um bishop e6 which was also kind of uh, reasonable move and g4 would come knight h4 and knight d4 it will be a bit a bit annoying even if it's not that clear but h5 stops this uh, stops this g4 and now so the, the whole idea of uh, white was to play e6. Now we take, and now we will see typical compensations for black when you have two bishops in this, because now the position is open, so it's a bit tricky for for white. Take on c7, f6. Uh, just sorry, we cannot really protect uh, the b6 one. We can protect k6, but so it would be incredibly passive on a6. So. That's better to play for compensation. And I like this line. F6, bishop b6, just king f7. And just playing, preparing some uh, rook, some rook lift here. And uh, targeting this pawn. So white is playing b3, protecting the pawn. And now rook catch c8. Which I think is a very good move. Just preparing c5 and tapping. Uh, tapping the, the bishop on b6. So now white has to play an ID4, takes, takes bishop f5, and now uh, we can see that uh, these pawns are just all very weak. 
and it's very very difficult and it's very very good very good compensation for black even we must try to to to, to play for an advantage and yeah, the eight so con a two is very of course is a misplaced but it was not not easy to protect this pawn on c2 if rook d2 we just pin for instance or even we can come here i mean it's very very difficult for 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 white to to untangle and uh, to protect all this this pawn chain so we see what happens if uh, if uh, black uh, doesn't want to exchange uh, the knight so of course it's possible to take on h4 um on move uh, on move uh, 11 it's possible to take takes bishop is three okay many moves again and uh, g4 is uh, is uh, an option which is sometimes very very critical and uh, just uh, i want to follow it with f4 so h5 um f3 is always an option of course, but uh, yeah, just bishop e6, king g2, uh, b6, and this kind of stuff are just uh, always very okay for black. Let's say if you go knight e2, uh, king e7, knight d4, c5, uh, knight f5, takes, takes, and it's very, very much okay for, for black. This bishop on H4 actually is kind of uh, uh, controlling the E1 square. So one could go just rook AD8. And uh, these pawns, these pawns are kind of weak. So we can as, as well try knight E4 here, then just C5. And yeah, it's very important to know that, uh, of course, the pawn ending is lost, but uh, very often the the so ending, especially with an active king, is just very much fine for black. Let's say if white, uh, white takes, just king takes, and this pawn will always be be a weakness. And with such such an active king, it's hard to imagine uh, black in trouble here. So if rook f d one uh, instead of knight take e six, just rook a d eight. The thing now uh, to take, then white, uh, white would just take and pawn a2. Pawn on a2 would be hanging. Um, so that's why white has to play a3 and now rook d4, planning to, to simply to double on the d line and get, get the line. So I think this is not not uh, nothing to worry for, for 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 black so i thought g5 was critical because basically uh, there is a little trick which you should know because uh, uh, it's it's good for for for, for black uh, if you if you if your bishop on h4 doesn't get caught so if you take on h3 that would be a blunder because of rook d1 king moves somewhere and rook d4 and the bishop has no square and he is lost if bishop g4 then just the little trick f3 and we lose a piece so that's not possible but here black has to be very precise so white's threat is basically to 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 give a check here and come here and tap the the bishop on, on h4 so we have to be uh, very fast and play f6 yeah and black black is just in time so of course uh white has to react so takes takes and of course if you play f4 here i mean my now suddenly my 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 bishop gets a very nice square on g3 so i can for instance take take and whatever bishop g3 for instance and this pawn is hanging this pawn is hanging so that would be just very good very good for black so take on f6 take on f6 knight e4 this is just take on f6 would be just a disaster and i would just take back and my bishops 
are working. Uh, OG8 is coming. Uh, so this would be just very good, very good for black. So knight e4 is a critical try. Now we just take on g5. Yeah, take on s3 would be a bit, little bit tricky. Yeah, Rook d1, king e7, I take f6, and uh, lose quite bad actually for for black because this uh, uh, two passers. I mean, it's always a bit tricky, and bishops, uh, bishops are a bit weird now on h4 and h3. Let's say they are not exactly centralized. So take on g5. Bishop takes g5 check. Takes, takes, and now very, very important move. Uh, the threat, of course, is to is to give a check here and collect the rook. So uh, here, black should play king e7, which is a very good move. And uh, the king, the king on f6 will actually be very, very safe. And uh, white has a pass pawn, but uh, black has very active pieces. The bishop, the bishop will come here on f5, and the rooks on e8 and e8, most likely. And so I believe this position is completely fine for black. So h4, bishop f5, rook e1, king f6, and now, and now it's probably the best for 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 white. It's just to repeat the moves. Knight e4, king f7. Even if the hook ending again uh, uh, would be certainly fine for black. But why? If you have a bishop, uh, the bishop is stronger than the knight, and probably white has to repeat. And uh, it's just a draw. And let's say if uh, uh, white doesn't want to repeat, let's say some king g2, some, some move. Uh, of course, it's not advised to take here because of rook e6 check. And uh, if uh, rook ad8, then yeah, just king g2, rook ad8, and black black is very active. Just coming here, uh, sorry, uh, just coming to d2, and uh, uh, more than enough counterplay, and uh, even could could become better for for black. So. Uh, so this knight take h4 is not exactly the um, the critical move, and now we will see the the, the critical move, which I think is a game uh, which was played uh, between uh, Fabiano Caruana and Sergei Karakin in 2014. So you see this line. I mean, it's quite recent. It was not played. Let's say it was not played in uh, in early 2000 when uh, Kamnik played it until. I think the first few games were 2014-2015 and uh, now of course my best guess is that it will become very very popular because of uh, Alpha Zero played it and uh, in the next video uh, in the next video uh, after Rook D1 check on move 9 here uh, we'll see some Alpha Zero games uh, which are very very impressive it seems he's playing the, this Berlin end game from, for a win since uh, the very start and a uh, couple of games were just very very impressive according to me so knight h4 so now we are following a game Kawana Kawana Kayakin from Shamkir 2014 uh, now of course uh, he just took, took took on h4 of course knight d4 is always uh, possible and we can just play knight f5 this was actually uh, a game no, it was not. Maybe it was not played. It was not exactly here. And uh, knight c2. It is very similar to a, to a game Alan Carlsen from from 2015, I guess. Knight c2 takes takes bishop d7. And in general, I mean, uh, uh, black exchange one pair of knight, and it's uh, I think quite a good deal. Uh, bishop is three, and now. I will just show, show the, the typical plan here, which is just you you put the, the rook on the open file, and then in general, if black didn't play, if white didn't play uh, g4, you just go h5, h4, and then the rook uh, can come to to h to h5. 
So it's a bit messy here. So we'll see bishop e3, rook d8, knight e2, and now h5. We start the plan. And in uh, in um, I mean this pawn can uh, sorry, this pawn can become quite weak. Um, so um, yeah, black. As uh, all the, his pieces playing, the king in the center, uh, h4, h4, hook, hook h5 will come, and uh, I think it's just very very pleasant position for for, for black. Of course, knight f5 is not uh, mandatory at all. Knight g6, I think, is as well uh, attacking this pawn. Uh, attacking this pawn is very very playable, uh, and probably. Black has to, white has to lose the tempo by playing rook e1. Uh, it's also, also an option, yeah. But as we want, uh, this is just very playable for, for for black. But we want to, I think black has no, always the same plan. So h5, h4, uh, bishop to c8, and uh, rook h5, of course. And it's very very difficult to for black to organize uh, f5, f5 or e6. So black is uh, is fine as well. But our strategy is to to try to exchange uh, this knight. So or or say or uh, say to white that they have to to retreat their knight to e2. So I, I would say that uh, knight f5 back uh, fits more in, into our repertoire. So let's see that game between uh, between uh, Caruana and Kayakin. Uh, so he took on h4. Uh, bishop take h4. Um, and now he played this typical uh, typical plan to to just uh, to maneuver the, the 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 knight to try to organize the push this e6 push. Uh, it's 92 and of course 94 would would be as well a very normal move but then black has uh, bishop f5 and uh, uh, this, this pawn is hanging so it's not it's not easy for white to to deal with that so this is a game uh, I put myself but this is a game Kawana uh, Kaikin from uh, Shamkir 2014, 92, and now very logical move, h5, which is not, of course, it's a way to prevent g4, but it's as well. I mean, in uh, later, uh, black will push that pawn, and the rook will come to h5, and it will be, uh, it's a way, it's a way to activate this rook, and it's very, very important idea to, to keep in mind on this line. So, bishop is 3 uh, which is very logical, some normal developing move. Bishop is seven, and now it's not uh, not easy. I mean, like if uh, White would play knight d4, let's say, to to try to organize e6, even if uh, the rook the rook should be here for for that, would be better. But even we can kick, we can can kick this uh, this knight out by playing, uh, uh, let's say, a6. Uh, followed by c5 and it's uh, again uh, very comfortable uh, for black and uh, it's not clear what uh, white did so Kawana who used to play uh, who used to try his luck against the Berlin and uh, against the Berlin in the end game now stopped and uh, is playing for d3 so um, it's as well a sign that uh, only from the top players uh, only basically is the only Two remaining uh, players playing this end game, entering the end game, are uh, Maxim Vashilagrav, my countryman, and uh, Alexander Grichuk from uh, from Russia. And uh, they are trying, but they are the, the last one, and, uh, and not uh, not with a lot of success. Many many doors, of course. And uh, Carola was uh, quite some uh, aficionado of, uh, in the in the end game. He just stopped now and uh, generally played for this result. It's quite a sign when uh, strong players uh, just uh, say run out of ideas. So he just played rook d2 here, which is very logical. He just want to 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 double to double the rooks, and uh, who knows? 
can be useful, yeah, just to activate all these pieces. But uh, Kayakin just uh, continues like nothing happens. Just play h4, rook d1, rook h5, activating the rook as well, as I told you, and targeting the pawn, of course, on uh, on e5, which uh, is not always a, you have to be careful with uh, taking the pawn, let's say, if if white just pass, then rook takes c5. I'm not sure rook takes c5 would be the move here because of bishop f4 and uh, targeting this pawn. And it could be a bit tricky for for black as uh, as the bishop, uh, let's say, rook, rook f5, uh, bishop takes c7, and now the white pieces are quite a uh, active suddenly. So it's not... Uh, it's not always a good deal to take this pawn, but to threaten to take it, then then you have to consider if you want to take it immediately or, or wait a little bit. Let's say after a3, uh, you could start with uh, bishop e6, and just maybe later, uh, maybe later take take the pawn. You have many useful moves here, like uh, then uh, then b6, maybe a5 even, uh, and then c5. It's always possible to find uh, useful moves for black. So rook h5, uh, bishop f4 protecting the pawn nevertheless. Uh, a6, just uh, kind of preventing preventing black to preventing white sorry to 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 go to go knight d4 by kicking kicking the side. But here, uh, Kawana is admitting that he doesn't know what to do and. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy for for, for white to to come up with a plan uh, because basically, I mean, all the pieces are in optimal optimal squares, and it's uh, very difficult to to go to go forward. I would say and to to push because this h4 pawn h4 pawn sorry is making a very good job by uh, stopping white to push his uh, pawn majority on the king side. So he's playing knight d4. And now, okay, so Kaya can play c5, which is very logical, and just back. And of course, this has weakened uh, the square on d5. But that's still a very long way to go for, for white. And uh, uh, it's clear that uh, by losing uh, two tempi, white is not playing for an advantage anymore. So bishop e6 uh, is what uh, Kaya can did, very logical. Knight c3, rook d8, wanting to exchange one pair of rook, and uh, knight d5. Okay, and here Kayakin played uh, rook d7. It was possible, I'm pretty sure alpha 0 would have played for a win here and uh, start to take, takes, 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 rook f5. And as you can see, uh, the rook is pinned. Bishop is a bit, is very unstable here, and uh, it's not so easy to deal for white about this. So you have to go to h2, but of course it's not really the square you like when uh, there is so many, so, so little pieces left. And black can go c4, followed by instance by uh, c6 and uh, b5 pushing the pawns, and uh, maybe even bishop c5 is coming f2. Uh, f2 is a weakness. And it's very very comfortable for for black, but uh, Kayakin was uh, was it seems uh, very happy with the ball, and he just played the, 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 the routine move, let's say rook d7. And uh, after, of course, uh, uh, now if White has to do something, there is no 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 plan. He has to exchange. Uh, so all this root to actually uh, it was d4 e2. And uh, sorry, d4, a2, c3, uh, c3, d5, c3, d5, e7, just to exchange, uh, to exchange the bishop. So that was a bit, a bit sad, and to make a draw because basically this opposite color ending uh, are in general uh, very easy for black to make a draw. So he played a3 because this pawn a2 was hanging actually. Okay, five bishop h two, g five, threatening here, 
I just that was just a way um, to repeat moves. So that's uh, that's uh, the the main uh, this nine H three now is the most uh, let's say is the most is considered to be the most critical. But as we could see, it seems that this uh, uh, bishop is seven. Uh, line is uh, is um, is solving uh, black problems in quite in a very efficient way, and um, in the next video we will see uh, how black should deal with uh, uh, rook d1 uh, nine nine rook d1 check, and uh, okay so see you there and thanks for watching.